I'm Paula Hammond, and I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Um, our next speaker is Sanjeev Gambier, and uh, he is actually a fascinating example of the combination of science and medicine. He holds a PhD in biomathematics, but is also a medical doctor, having participated in the medical scientist training program. And uh, he is now uh, an endowed professor at Stanford. Uh, in fact, holds the Virginia and Ludwig, Virginia and DK Ludwig Professor for Clinical Investigation and Cancer Research at uh, Stanford University. He also is affiliated with several other departments there, including the Material Science and Engineering Department. Uh, the, he's the head of Nuclear Medicine Division and the Department of Bioengineering. And he is the director of the Molecular Imaging Program at Stanford. Uh, now, Sanjeev has actually accomplished a great deal in his career, having dedicated 15 years uh, to molecular imaging in cancer research. And uh, he's won several awards for this. He's a member of the Institute of Medicine. Uh, he won the Tesla Medal, uh, which was presented by the United Kingdom Royal College of Radiologists. And uh, he also holds the Aunt Minnie Award, which is an award given for the most influential radiology researcher. And uh, he's also won several other uh, additional awards which represent the work and dedication that he's put forward uh, in the field of uh, cancer research. Um, he's going to talk to us about how molecular imaging can help us both in diagnosis and in understanding uh, cancer. So I'd like to turn uh, the microphone over to Sam Gambier. I was asked to turn over my wallet. Uh, <laughs> not sure why. Uh, and this is MIT, OK. So I, I was sitting in the audience all day yesterday and trying to figure out, you know, I, actually, I have absolutely no connection to MIT, having always grown up in Arizona and then Southern California. And I was thinking there must be some connection other than I have postdocs from MIT now. And then it occurred to me that um, one of the best teachers I ever had when I was working on my doctorate in, in mathematics was a professor um, uh, at UCLA who had trained here at MIT, Ken Lang. And Ken Lang uh, was the chair of biomathematics at UCLA for many years. And why I remembered him is he was the only person who actually gave me a B plus during um, all my uh, <laughs> training, in addition to the fact that he was a phenomenal teacher. But I think this is truly an incredible place, and I'm privileged and honored to be here with you to share with you some of our uh, thoughts in, in the area of um, molecular imaging of cancer. And to me, this is um, a work in progress. I'm going to talk to you about things that are pieces of upcoming stories that don't fully uh, yet have solutions to kind of get you to think about these things. So part of this is a sermon in what I believe based on seeing things at the hospital and patient side, and part of it is how we're shaping our research to, I think, answer important problems. So I'll talk first about um, an important area which is really merging in vitro and in vivo diagnostics. Too often, people in the imaging arena work alone in that arena, and people in in vitro diagnostics work alone in that area, and really there is an importance to bring the two together, and I'll share some thoughts about that. Then I'll talk to you about some initial mathematical modeling we've done for early cancer detection and trying to put a mathematical framework around why it might be possible to detect very small tumors and what kinds of things are going to be needed to detect very small tumors in order to go forward. Then I'll talk about a novel strategy to increase blood biomarkers. How do we literally stress your body to get it to increase the level of proteins being shed and or secreted from tumors. Then we'll move into molecular imaging, and today I'll focus more on sound-based technologies, uh, new strategies with targeted microbubbles that we're taking to the clinic, and new strategies in photoacoustics, which actually date back to Alexander Graham Bell and his work here at Boston University. And then I'll try to put all this together um, very quickly. So let's start with what really uh, matters, why uh, this center that's now coming to fruition in the new building, all the centers around the US uh, are working hard. And that is the situation that this uh, uh, husband finds himself with his wife. And he, as all of you in this room, if you've not been in a situation like this, are going to ask, why was the cancer not detected earlier? 
we see too many patients with very late stage disease, and even what we call relatively early disease is still relatively late. And I would argue that many of our drugs and strategies for treating cancer that actually have the potential to work can't when there's a heavy tumor burden. And so we need to shift into getting our youngest minds excited about the hardest problem. And that hard problem in this case is earlier cancer detection. It's not a surprise when we look at the data that as you back up and look at uh, you know, earlier and earlier stage tumors of many types, that the survival curves quite often look like what's shown here. Uh, when you have cancers that are truly caught in stage one, two, we have much better survival rates. And yet, when we look at what's happening in this country, and that matter worldwide, we're spending 100 times more on the late stage problem. And this has fundamentally got to change. We in the imaging community ourselves are guilty of this because we've been afraid to tackle early detection because it is a harder problem. Because we'll see the numbers of cells we're trying to detect are hard. And I should also add, we're not just trying to detect all early tumors. We're trying to detect early relevant tumors, those that will go on to kill the patient. And there's a big difference, because the issue is not early detection, but early relevant cancer detection. And that's what we have to remain focused on. So if we look at this from a point of view of the number of cells we're trying to go after, the issue is, is that if we look at, for example, ovarian cancer, and typically, in most imaging scenarios, especially if we interrogate at the molecular level, we're at about a cubic centimeter of tumor mass. Most technologies, like positron emission tomography and imaging throughout the entire body, are typically in this area where there's already one half to three billion cells, many of which uh, may have already, of course, started to leave the site. And we're pushing imaging and in vitro detection technologies so that we can start to get to a cubic millimeter. And of course, it would be phenomenal if we could push even further and start to get to down to just a few thousand cells. This is a tall order because technologies have not really been there to move this um, window down. But I'll show you things that are happening and the way we're thinking about things now that make us cautiously optimistic that we can push this window down. So the biomarker detection blood is one component of this, the in vitro diagnostics. And in this case, of course, we have tumor that is shedding and or secreting biomarkers, including proteins, microRNA, different biomarkers. And the goal is to detect these through a blood sample. Challenging because it's not clear what biomarkers we need to look for. We don't even know if they're specific to the tumor, how much of those same biomarkers are made by normal cells. But we do have this great advantage of being able to multiplex, being able to take many, many different protein signature and or other component biomarker signatures from that blood sample. The counter to this, then, is that in molecular imaging, we are looking to go into the body and put in um, what will be an imaging agent that will home in on the tumor. So now the imaging agent goes in and, of course, interacts with and binds to the tumor. So they're quite similar but different in execution. In one case, you have biomarkers that end up in the blood. In another case, you have biomarkers that you want to stay at the tumor site at the tumor tissue so that your imaging agent can go detect the location of the tumor. 